Welcome to League of Knowledge with Pantar Dragon. And in today's episode, I just want to be going over Mordekaiser and what the best build is for him at the moment. And I'll mostly be comparing it with builds on pro builds. And so this video is going to be a little rant on how pros are building Mord, while just giving you my opinion on, you know, what the best build is. And again, I just love this champion so much. He's really fun since he's like so unique and scales with everything. And I've been trying to figure out him since the PvE server. So yeah, this video should be really interesting and give my final conclusion of him. And also, I'm just gonna give a little announcement. I'll be at PAX Prime from the 28th to 31st. So if you're there, be sure to say, oh hey, what's up, hello. Anyways, with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so a lot of people are building various things on Mordkaiser, mainly Trinity Force, and then they build different things after that. What I've been doing is I've been building M-Pen and Gordon Rileys and Leandres. There was one game that I tried Triforce and Sterex Gage, but before we get really in depth on the Mordkaiser build, I just want to do a small rant on what the fuck these pros are leveling up first and their runes. Okay, so first up, let's go over their skill order. They're maxing out E, and then they max out their Q, and then they max out their W. I agree with maxing out Q second, and maybe sometimes first if you're already snowballing in lane, and you just want to get to the team fight stage. But maxing out E first? Really? Okay, so I already did this in an analysis video, but let's do it again. Okay, so this skill, look how much base damage it goes up per level. 30. Sure, the cooldown goes down by 0.25 seconds every level, but 0.25 seconds, that's so shit! So shit! You don't level up skills so you get 0.25 seconds less on ability. You level up the skill to reduce the cooldown for at least one second. And also the old Mordkaiser E scaled with 45 damage per level. This one already has an AD ratio so all you have to do is level up and it'll go up by levels. Plus it already gives you 50% of your shield when you E someone so it's already really good with just one point into it. And when you do put points in this skill, the health costs increase so you're going to be using a lot of your health just to harass the enemy in lane. So in conclusion, this skill isn't that great to level up at all. And if you're melee with a support versus like an AD carry with a support, you're already at a disadvantage since you aren't ranged. So in the poke war, you're probably going to lose that. And the way melees are supposed to win these lanes is they go all in or nothing. And that's why you max out W first. Look at this thing, this gives you a lot of base damage, this gives you healing, and the cooldown goes down by one, and the damage can be doubled since the W stacks. So this skill is really good in every scenario, like if you're behind then they can heal you and sustain you under tower, or if you're ahead your all lanes with your support is super fucking strong, and so it's just really mind boggling that people will max out E over this. You know, it can be debatable with maxing out Q first instead of W. Like for instance, I might have 3 points into W, and once I see that I'm snowballing super hard, I will max out Q or something like that. That's an argument that can definitely come up. But yeah, with this, it just makes you super strong. You can probably 2v3 the jungler if he comes. And yeah, that's my round for the skill order. And next up, let's just go over the runes. Reckles and Turtle are taking physical damage with attack speed. I can kinda see the physical damage working. I do recommend like hybrid pen runes though. But attack speed quints, that's kind of weird. Kind of controversial since you aren't maxing out Q first, and it seems like your main harassment tool will be E, so you'd think you'd be taking AP runes or AD. So I'm not sure if they're just lazy and forgot to change the rune page, but I don't think that's the case and they're actually using this with more. But what I recommend is something like this page. Hybrid pen or magic penetration for reds. Two ability power quints, one armor just to survive in lane, and an armor per level for your yellows, and then finally CDR per level, as his cooldowns are somewhat long, so reducing them in the mid game and late game will be definitely beneficial. Or maybe something like this and just go all out, and just emphasize on increasing those AP and AD ratios on your Q. And while we're at it, masteries will look something like this. Now, for the build comparison analysis with like Leonji's and Rallies versus the Trinity Force Sterex Gauge. There's one item I do want to be going over and that's the Hexet Gunblade and why you shouldn't build it. So AD and AP, those are really nice stats for Mordkaiser since he scales with both. That's a really nice active too, especially if you're building AP. And so it also allows us to chase down people and get our three Qs onto someone. But we have two stats that are not that great on Mordkaiser at all. Spell Vamp and Life Steal. So the Life Steal is wasted because, well, we don't auto attack really, unless it's for our three Qs. But yeah, it's not that great of a stat, but let's talk about the spell vamp. So there are two abilities, Q and R, which apply to full spell vamp, but it's W and E. They only return 33% of the spell vamp he has since they are AoE. But the thing is, Mordkaiser already has sustain with his W and R. You don't really need more than that. Like, having spell vamp on someone already has innate sustain, 
is not that efficient. And the only reason you get spell vamp on the old Mord Kaiser is because you max out E, which has a high health cost, so you need something to sustain yourself. But now, you don't need that. You already have sustain with your W, so you're better off with other items. Now finally, let's compare my Rylai's Leandre's build versus the Trinity Force Stairs Gauge build. So the reason I did my build at first was because I like to emphasize on his high base damage. Like all of his spells do have really high base damage, so if I just added M Pen to that, that'd be really good. And I'd be this really bursty off tank who can, you know, do a lot of damage. And of course, Rylai's helped me stick to people so I can get those three big auto attacks with my Q. The Rylai's also applied 40% slow to your ghosts when they auto attack someone. So that was nice, and the Leandries had like a bunch of beneficial stats for Mordkaiser and had synergy with Rylai's. And also your Dragon Ghost proc the Leandries so you could use that as a poke tool. And I just saw like a lot of utility and damage with this build so I liked it a lot. But now, let's talk about the Trinity Force and Starix Gauge build. So there's a lot of benefits to this build and I will say from the start that I do like it more. And the reasons I like it is because Trinity Force gives all the stats that more Kaiser wants to emphasize for his Q. He likes to move in speed from the Phage to get his 3 auto attacks off from his Q. All the stats benefit him except for like the mana. And his skill cooldowns are rather low so he can make efficient use of the spell blade. He also has the highest base attack damage in the game, so your spell blade proc is gonna hurt a lot. And that's also why you go Sterex Gauge, because it has really good synergy with Trinity Force as it does increase your base AD, so your tri first spell blade proc will hurt a lot more, and of course it increases your damage on your E and Q. And so as you can see, this build is more bruiserish and makes him emphasize on getting close and in melee to proc that Q, while other build emphasizes on AP and more of an off tank AP build and being behind the tanks. Like I just feel much more comfortable with the Triforce build. I feel like I can stay in the front line getting my Q off, while with the M Pen build I just have to be cautious of my positioning so I don't get bursted out or caught off guard. So what my build looks like is something like this. You can go Relic Shield, but my motive is fuck your support. He doesn't need money to be efficient, so you might as well try and start building towards your core items. Maybe in some matchups where you lose, you might want to start Dorn Shield, but other times you can start whatever you want. And then you can build Rylai's because, well, why not? It's like combining the best of both worlds, you know? So it is nice to have. You can also have it before Sterex Gauge if you want to. And then Spirit Visage because cooldown is nice and you heal a lot. Or if their physical damage is a lot, pick like something like Randuin's. Anyways, thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.